Neil Bowles is here. I got a waft early. Uh, Neil Bowles is here from Felixstowe. Good morning. Good morning from this curmudgeonly old gets <laughs> lovely and uh, nice. You bought the uh, chocolate chip hobnobs. So <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks. It wouldn't be the same without biscuits. Barry Dye will be jealous. I know. Mm. I know. He's, uh, he, he only comes for the biscuits. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, also with us is uh, the Reverend Andrew Dotchin, vicar of Felixstowe, and the rural dean of Colnice. I, I, I declare no absolute, uh, no idea what's going on at all. Colnies. Isn't that kind of rabbit? I don't know, is it? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost Coney. me already. <laughs> yeah. Coney, Coney. Oh, that's it, right. <laughs> It's going to be one of those hours. I can't <laughs> feel like yes, it. yes. And Matt Porter is here making his uh, Grumby Old Git debut. Yay! He's, our, he's our gadget guru from Matt, Matt Porter Web Design, based at Innovation Martlesham on Ad Astral Park. And um, good morning. Let's start with you, shall we? You know about computers, don't you? Uh, please, yeah. <laughs> Ish. yeah. You um, know about computers, yeah. don't you? I, f f he for knows the, about computers for the, yeah. for the last twenty or don't so let years. Know you know. Yeah. Yeah. For the last 20 years, I've worked in IT or with computers. Not so much in the last 10 years, I guess, because I do web design. But um, because I touch a computer most days... We need a website for our church. Can we talk afterwards? We'll talk yeah. afterwards. <laughs> um, people say, well, you know about computers, don't you? And I do know about computers, but um, I always end up looking after, you know, put someone have a virus or they've got some horrendous things happen to their computer could you have a quick look matt and i know that it's going to be two or three hours of ang uh, uh, aggravation i think so uh and, and how much are they happy to pay you after all of this ah uh, mate mate rates would be good yeah <laughs> i um <laughs> it's terribly embarrassing if it's a friend because they say well what do i owe you matt and i said well i, I don't know and they say i said well whatever you like and they'll give you a tenner and you think, well, I'd rather <laughs> you didn't give me anything at all, actually. <laughs> because if you thought my last three hours was worth a tenner... Oh, no. A bit, yeah, it's a bit insulting. I just asked you to look at my iPad. People say, well, I'll pray for you. <laughs> Good reward. Yeah. yeah but, mm. I used to get the same thing when I was a mechanic back in the day. And yeah. was, oh, you're yeah. a mechanic, aren't yeah. you? Can you mm. just come and have a look at a car for me? And mm. I, I only ever did it once. And uh, you, it's just a nightmare when anybody asks you that because you can't look inside the engine. You can't check yeah. everything. And if it mm. goes wrong... Then they're straight on to you. Well, you said it'd be all right. Yep. You said it was fine. Yeah, I didn't know that, you know, dreadful. Yeah. I, I went to a, uh, a, a, a friend's um, a christening um, a few years ago, and my friend's father, Rod, he used to be an executive in Phillips, um, quite high up. And uh, we were sitting there the next morning all round the breakfast table in the hotel, and uh, one of his relatives said, Rod, you work at Phillips, don't you? He said, well, I'm retired now. He says, I've got this television at home. <laughs> Do you know how I get into the, into the, um, ad, into the test menu? And it was... There must be. <laughs> there must be other professions. I bet if you're a GP... Or you say to someone, I'm a doctor. Oh, yeah. The temptation <laughs> is great, isn't yeah, it? Oh, Particularly yeah. when you get to our age, the temptation <laughs> is great, isn't it? Um, oh, you're a, oh, you're a doctor. Oh, oh, well, yes, I've, I've been getting this sort of slight ache in my shoulder. <laughs> I mean, that must happen all the time, don't you think? No, no, no. Where a dog collar to work, people run miles. Really? Yeah, get away from you. <laughs> oh, bless. Yeah, it was oh. funny when I was a policeman because uh, you'd go to a party or something and meet some new people and people say, oh, this is Mark, this is Matt, this is Andrew, this is Neil the policeman. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. always nil the policeman. Mm. And then people are, oh, do you know, oh, I got stopped the other day. Oh, mm -hmm. haven't you got anything you better to do? You've all these stories <laughs> about how unlucky they were and the way they were beaten yeah. up in the cells yeah. and tasered and all this. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you catching all the proper criminals? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, dear. Uh, so perhaps when we go to places, we just shouldn't say what we do? That would, have, yeah. that would be an answer, wouldn't yeah. it, really? Yes. Yeah, Neil, you're a carer. Can you just hoist me up <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and change my underwear? <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's got us underway. Yeah. Now, look, can, I, can I lob one in before you really get, get started too much? Because we were talking earlier this week about Happy Valley, the TV show with uh, Sarah Lancashire, which is a brilliant programme, if you can understand what they're saying. And uh, and I thought it was just me. I thought I was the only one with cloth ears. <laughs> and then Sally, producer next door... You couldn't hear it either, yeah. could you? Couldn't hear a thing. Not a thing. No, no. I thought I'd gone deaf. Yeah, not a thing. Mm. And we were inundated with, with people. Uh, Carol in Colchester, um, this, this came in overnight. She says, uh, we're always using the remote to up and down the volume when changing channels. We look at each other and say, can you hear it or is it me? <laughs> Things are not what they used to be. 
How many times do we say that? Great program against us, Carolyn Colchester. So do you experience this as well, Neil? Do you find that, you know, you are having to use the remote control far more than once you've just ordinarily set the volume? <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> what I thought. Yeah. yeah, I've got one of these sound bars on the telly because I think it's a fact that we're getting bigger and flatter televisions, aren't we? Mm. With fantastic pictures. Yeah, but there's not enough room for speakers. I think that is the the yeah. problem, isn't it? It's physical. It's a physical impossibility yeah. that you're going to get high quality speakers in something that's very thin. Yeah. That's right. So the uh, so the the way around it to certain extent is sound bars. Computers. Yeah, you yeah. know all about. Do you know that. anything so about tellies and computers? A little bit. So you get these sound bars. Yeah, you do. But yeah. the the difference between the programmes and then when the adverts come on, oh, and then you, I mean, the we adverts. had a similar problem with the Jamaica Inn series about a year ago. Now Jamaica oh. Inn is one of my favourite stories, and I was really looking forward to that series. I love the book. And Linda and I, when we first knew each other, actually spent the summer season working in the real Jamaica Inn pub. Brilliant. And, and it means a lot. And when it came on, it was just this all... Did you do a bit of smuggling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still do. <laughs> all right. And, and, a and the mumbling... And I, I just gave up on the whole series. I just didn't pursue yeah. it anymore. It just, mm. it just bored me silly because I couldn't understand it. I didn't watch this programme the other day, but I would imagine it was the but same even problem. when you've got all of the gizmos, you know, as I said earlier in the week, and, and the boys bought me a lovely telly. It's one of the, the modern yeah. tellies. Yeah. Um, and we've got a, a, a big bass speaker and a couple of speakers that Put either side of the, the you know yeah. telly, so so it should be fine. Subwoofer. I'm, I'm sure. It's yeah, that's it. Subwoofer. <laughs> Somewhere in Bush House is a mixing desk, and they can just balance the stuff out. Yeah, you'd push up. So. You'd, you'd hoped. What yeah. I have is an email courtesy of Valerie. Good old Val. Val Hi, they Mark. wrote a song about her. Hi, Mark. I had the problem of mumbling on TV programs. I wrote to the BBC. Hey. Hey. Dear Ms. West, thank you for your email to the BBC Trust Charter Review email address. La, 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 la. I am very pleased that you've taken the time and trouble. La, 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 la. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to read that your enjoyment of some BBC drama has been marred by issues around audio levels, to the point that on occasion you have given up and changed channel. <gasps> Well, we had people putting subtitles on the other day. Cause yeah, you know, I've done that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you might be interested to know that BBC launched an investigation into uh, audibility in partnership with institutions such as the Royal National Institute for the Deaf People. It was discovered that a combination of factors could create problems. For example, a mumbling actor, recordings being made in a noisy environment, and the addition of music over speech all being issues. The result of this research is that the BBC now has a best practice guide for programme makers available on the BBC's training website. Shame some don't access it. <laughs> this gives clear <laughs> guidance on the... It's my career over. This yeah. gives clear guidance on the small things that programme makers can do to make a big difference to the audience's ability to hear and therefore enjoy BBC programmes to the fullest possible extent. This is like points of view, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to host that. Yeah. Unfortunately, the levels cannot be you adjusted. Like Barry Took. Thanks. <laughs> unfortunately, the levels... Do you do computers? Uh, unfortunately, the levels cannot be adjusted to suit the different needs of each audience member. Now, the thing is... Uh, no, no, I, I, no. I take issue here, because when I was little, before the days of big tellies and remote controls, mm. you pushed the button, you switched the so telly on... It worked. And it worked, yeah. and you sat there, and you didn't have to keep getting up and down no. to change things. Did you? No. You, yeah, it's, it's that old thing, it's somebody else's fault. Every time you've been to the shop, and you, you hand over your card... And it doesn't work in the machine. And they say, your card needs fixing. And I think, funny, it worked at the shop before, yeah, and it's yeah. going to work at the shop afterwards. It's yeah. never the machine's fault. It's never the person you're complaining to's fault. They're the ones who can fix it. Hopefully, next week's episode will be mm. better. So, I was just wondering, you've got a sand bar. Yeah. I've got a system. Have you got a system with your telly, or...? Uh, we, we have to got to wind up oh, Steam right. Wireless. Well, there's a couple of us. So, yeah. I mean, Matt, you, you, you do computers. I do. Can you yeah. fancy... You know, what, can you, what you not you come around and just... <laughs> well, I think, <laughs> just, <laughs> I think that some of these sets, if you look, there is an automatic volume... Um, um, monitoring uh, s system on a lot of televisions where it will do some degree of um, uh, uh, control for you. So yeah. if, if... I think it's probably to do with uh, some of these programmes of bo broadcast and the gain, the audio gain is too high, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Or they're over-modulating or okay. something, whatever we want to call it. But um, you can do, there are certain things you can do to the telly, but to be fair, um, it must be very, very difficult to manage at the yeah. broadcast end as well. well Am I used being to too it. forgiving? Yeah. Yeah. They used <laughs> to do it. We never had a problem back in the day. Well, yeah. I think that's because the quality of the sound on our TVs is so good now that we pick up mm -hmm. these differences. But saying that, if you go onto BBC and listen to something and you switch over to ITV, you find the volume is higher on certain channels yeah. as well, I've noticed. Yeah. And the adverts, though, when they come mm. on, oh. 
And it's some it. films as well, where the talking's very quiet, so you turn the volume yeah. up, and then suddenly there's... Mm. But they deny explosions. that the adverts are louder, don't they? Oh, the they, are. they all deny out. But I find that statement quite funny when they're talking about mumbling actors, because there are very few actresses on the TV scene at the moment more experienced than Sarah Lancashire. Yeah. Mm. And I've never heard her mumble in any other programme, so why yeah. should she suddenly start mumbling now? So, mm. uh, <laughs> And are they oh, actresses or actors these days? I think they're actors now. Actors. Oh, actors, actors of course yeah. they yeah. are, yeah. Interesting, they? interesting, yesterday yeah. I did an assembly at Langer Primary Academy about heroes and heroines. And they decided heroin is a non-word. Because the first person in history called Hero was a girl. Oh. The story of Hero and Leander. So we need to ditch the word heroin as well? Yeah, we don't have we doctoresses. Have no. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we do have priestesses, though, but that's a different religion. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's so com- life's so complicated. Anyway, Richard from Cratfield's been in touch. Good morning. I have a slight grumble. Why is there only one Monopolies Commission? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point, actually. <laughs> Don't say that when I've just taken a sip of coffee. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. BBC Radio Suffolk. Travel. Let's get the latest now, and Gary's here with the detail. Hi, Gary. Hi, Mark. Yeah, Bury St Edmunds and on Wesley Road. They're doing some works there, so there are restrictions around by Highbury Crescent. In fact, temporary traffic lights are there. In Felixstowe on uh, St George's Road, there are road works there by the junction of Ferry Road. And in Rushmere Road in Ipswich, near the uh, training club centre for Ipswich Town, uh, they've got some temporary traffic lights in place because of the road works. That's the latest from BBC Radio Suffolk Travel. Every 15 minutes at peak times and every 30 minutes throughout the day. BBC Radio Suffolk. BBC Radio Suffolk is the home of every Ipswich Town game. Pittman's telling them where he wants and he plays it into Pittman! He scores! On Saturday, Town travel to Bristol City. Get all the pre-match interviews on BBC Radio Suffolk Drive Time tonight from 6. Including Hear What Walkie Thinks. Get all the build-up to the game in Life's a Pitch. Saturday from 12, ahead of match day from 2. BBC Radio Suffolk is the home of every Ipswich Town game. And with the home of the Grumpy Old Gits today, it's Neil, it's Andrew and it's Matt and it is Paul in Harwich. Hello, Paul, good morning. Well, good morning to you, yeah. I'm yeah. one of the Grumpy Old Gits. I think anybody that watches television nowadays... <laughs> is <the> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty to grump about. So, so do you agree about the sound levels? Oh, it is unbelievable. I mean, c- compared to... I mean, I've got a different uh, pitch level than my wife has got a pitch level. And it, it's the... It, it's funny enough, it's, there is no... It doesn't seem to be that there is no broadcast level at all now, no matter what it is. Even, just say, for instance, BBC... You can get one channel doing it at one level, and then the next one is, is a different level. And it's a different pitch as well, you know. And, and we've got a sound bar, and i found that the only way really to get around of all of these things, because some people, especially women, funny enough, have got a deep brown voice, and it sort of booms out, you know. Yeah. So the only way is to set, set the level to be really, really treble, you know, and, and put it on, uh, not on music, but putting it on, uh, on the voice. Audio description. It, it, it's not mm. ideal. I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah. sort of, you know, it's not very good sound level at all. No, you know, the last thing you want to be is faffing around with your settings all the while. Yeah. As someone mm. said earlier in the week when we were talking about this, you know, once you get into your settings, unless you're like Matt, who knows about computers, yeah. um, <laughs> then, you, then you're in there forever, aren't you? Don't you, don't uh, you think, Paul? Yeah. You're in there forever it's once you're in settings. Well, I've, I've, on settings, I've actually written down the settings because you've got the level number just in case you have to reset it again, but... Uh, I mean, if you've got one of these televisions like we have, where you can actually change the different ones per person, then you're laughing. But as I say, you know, it's it's terrible. A friend, I'm luckily enough, I, I haven't got a hearing aid. I'm over retirement age, but yep. my friend has, has got a hearing aid. It is diabolical for them, it really is. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It really is. Paul, thank you very much. Uh, it, we will put this on our Grumpy Old Gits manifesto, I think. I yeah. think we can congratulate him for being yeah. a Grumpy Old Git. Yes, well, I, Paul. <laughs> I think we'll put this on our manifesto. Uh, we'll approach the BBC when it comes to charter review. Yep, my, I'll say one thing for, for the ladies in broadcasting. They actually have to work very hard at dropping their voices because a high-pitched voice mm. on radio or on TV, forget it. Mm. It just doesn't work at all. Mm. And if you look at your experienced newsreaders and such like, they're always deliberately dragging their voice down into the alto range. 
And, and if you get someone who's yet some of the younger teenage programs and, and a, a new presenter, they come in with a natural voice, and that's just as bad. Mm. You can hear it, but it's mm. Mm. Yeah, dog whistle stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got lots to cover on the show, and of course you can join in as well, 01473 212121, while we tuck into our chocolate chip hobnobs. Oh, oh, uh, and that's a very nice biscuit, I can't talk properly now, but never mind, it's very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, and lots coming in uh, today, and uh, Eleanor in Stowmarket um, has just sent a text. Admit it, guys, you're on the wrong side of 40. Hey. Uh, we're on the right side of 40. And constantly adjusting the volume on the TV <laughs> and being asked to turn it down. HD channels seem to need more volume, I find, says Eleanor. Mm -hmm. You're into computers, Matt. Have you found that? <laughs> um, <laughs> Give him a break. I, <laughs> I haven't noticed, actually, with HD, but if, if, if people do have... I think you can have them... Oh, no, that's for, for the partially cited mm. the audio description mm. channels. Yeah. They're quite good. Yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, she says, I read somewhere that filmmakers pay a lot of attention to picture quality these days, to the neglect of sound quality. Here, that's made me feel better, she says. Yeah. And that's very true, because it's HD this and so many mm. this that and the mm. others, isn't They've it? They've about the best boy. Wasn't yeah. it the best boy? Isn't he the guy with the mic? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There, there is actually... Um, uh, what's generally made... When, when films are made nowadays, they use um, a thing called colour grading, um, which is a... a Racism. Sort of colour grading, oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. There are a set of rules of um, how they should um, colourise a, a film, and they use a teal, blue and teal colour grading. So if you watch a, 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 Hol a, a Hollywood movie now... Now, after me saying this, you'll notice that their foreground is generally orange um, graded and the background is blue. And that's all about keeping the um, characters in the centre of the uh, of the action. He does know about computers, doesn't he? He does, yeah. 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 I've had a word with you about my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so my phone's playing up a bit. Yeah. Um, now then, Neil, uh, cleaning products. Oh. <clears throat> well, I buy all the cleaning... I do the cleaning in my house. Um... Some would probably say, I oh, don't bother. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and you, go, you, you only need a certain amount of basic cleaning materials in a house, really. You want a kind of bleachy-type product for your bathroom and your toilet. You want polish for the, the wooden services. You want general cleaning for the other kind of services. You want a degreaser-type thing for the uh, kitchens and all that sort of thing. But I find now that you go in to buy your cleaning products and you've got a whole aisle, two sides of it, just of cleaning products. It's unbelievable. And I, was, I just noticed yesterday in particular the different flavours. And I say flavours. Flavours? Are you eating yeah. your cleaning products? Well, I'll give you some examples. Um, floor cleaners, loo cleaners, um, air fresheners, melon. Melon. Melon, it, that's nice. Yeah. That's like, nice. And white flowers. Now, what the white My flowers My dog's smell definitely going to eat that, I tell you. Bleach. Bleach is now available in citrus, mm. orange, yep. original, and there's a new pink one out well, as well. Well, the original is that ammonia flavour. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, but if you go into a place and it smells of bleach, you know that the place is probably clean. Yeah. But they've got a pink one now, which is like a strawberry raspberry type of bleach. And the floor cleaner, I needed some floor cleaner because we've got wooden floors mostly. Yeah. And one of the ones I was offered was pomegranate and mango. <laughs> Oh, now, keep you on your knees, uh, won't it? Yeah. Oh. Now, I wonder if anybody has ever actually had a pomegranate and a mango on the same plate and bothered to smell it. So mm. if I open my pomegranate and mango, my pomegranate and mango floor cleaner, will I recognise the smell? You know, people what? are going to end up eating this. Stuff. Remember that glue you used to get at school, the white mm. paste stuff mm. that smelled like marzipan but yeah. didn't taste like it? No, it was horrible. That's the problem. Yeah. Some, it what? smells nice, so we're going to eat it. The, the other one I was offered is lime and bergamot. <laughs> Do you look at a, f a floor cleaner? I think that's the one I want. Well, yeah, lime I, and I love the smell well, of well, lime. I think well, this weekend we should all go into stores and say, "Have you got mm. any lime and burger <laughs> in my floor yeah, cleaner?" Yeah. I'm taking my trade elsewhere yeah. if you haven't. Yeah, go yeah, there are only three cleaners you need in the house: Vim, Vinegar, and Brasso. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what they taught us at school. Anything else is just elbow grease. Well, that's I ended up buying need. the kitchen degreaser yesterday, and I ended up choosing. Fresh apples. Fresh apples. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Have you, look... uh, you found scouring powder? Your good old fashioned VM anywhere? <laughs> Ajax? No. <laughs> it's not available. It was. Uh, oh, it was right. um, uh, Billy Connolly, wasn't it? Did the wonderful sketch about the uh, the amount of shampoos and conditioners that <laughs> are around today. Oh, it's a nightmare. Was, was going on all about jojoba. I seem to remember <laughs> uh, at the time. Jojoba beans. <laughs> yes. Yeah. My mm. goodness. I mean, there's so many choices there. It just used to be shampoo when I grew up. And what is yeah. aloe Condition vera? Conditioner yeah. never existed, did it? There was yeah. no such yeah. thing as Conditioner when I was young. Hello, Vera was something yeah. that used to be people saying hello to my mum in the old days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello, Vera. Yeah. I remember the heady days of beer flavoured shampoo. 
Remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Shampoo with extra beer. With shampoo, yeah. Yeah, with beer. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was really posh. Too much choice then, uh, uh, Matt? I think, I think there is um, quite a lot of choice. I, I, I mean, I, I, I get pulled into these things, I used to, when I was single, um, <laughs> because I'd go, go out shopping and i think, right, I'll get a nice shower gel. And... Um, and then I'd go and think, well, do I want mint or fresh mint? <laughs> <Yeah>. Peppermint? <laughs> or lemon or zesty lemon? Yeah. <sighs> you want to wash with it. You don't want to yeah. eat it. <laughs> you need to spend more time on your computer, you know that. I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you do computers? I do. <laughs> Excellent. But first of all, the changing date of Easter. <laughs> <laughs> this is important stuff. Do you know, I mean, I, if you were bored at school and mm-hmm. you had to sit in chapel front of the book of common prayer there's a table that would help you work out the golden number and the golden number helps you fix the date of easter for yonks at least until the year 2025 because oh, so if you're bored you could just sit down and work out the we date were all of easter. bored it was church of course okay. we were bored okay but the problem when you move easter particularly when it's early like it is this year is it means lent is early and in the church of england every february we have general synod Now, Desmond Tutu, one of my best friends, taught me the only way to survive long, boring church... I mean, the only way to survive exciting General Synod (laughs) was liberal application of mint imperials, jelly babies and licorice all sorts. And we'd sit at a table together and just pass them around during the boring bits. Next week is General Synod. It's Lent. (laughs) And I'm sitting in a row where our bishop, bless him, I love you, Martin has decided he's going to sit with the plebs. So do I take along my packet of mint imperials to stave off the boredom Mm. and pass them to the bishop? And I do one of two things. Either he gives me the evil eye, because I'm breaking the rules of Lent, or I lead him into temptation. (sighs) You know what it means? Is I'm going to have to go and find something, I hate to say this word, healthy Mm. to eat. I don't think you've ever done that before, have I you? Know, it's going to be hard. I'm going to need help here. Yeah, I mean, why can't we just have Easter the same day every year? Well, well the same yeah. Sunday. I, there's, there's a heresy called the Quarto Deciman Heresy. It basically says Easter is always the second Sunday in April. Now, that's a heresy worth being burnt at the stake for. It would be easier. None of this faffing around, looking for school holidays. Fine. I know some people will complain if Easter's that late every year, the snow is not going to be so good on the feast. Well, I don't. <laughs> but I don't understand. I've never really understood this Easter thing because, as a kid, no. you learn the story <laughs> of Jesus. I and don't, Jesus yeah. was born on Christmas Day, so we have Christmas Day, the twenty-fifth of December every year, is yeah. we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And at some point, Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead. Yeah. Well, surely that is. We all know when someone dies; they died on a certain date. And why? Do they not know? Well, well, you see, the problem is, it's all got to do with the date of Passover. And Passover's on when it's a full moon. And the, lo- the Passover calendar is a lunar calendar, 13 months of the year. The rest of the world runs a 12-month calendar. Can you calendar. just pass your mint imperials over? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> We've got jelly babies. Jelly babies. You want jelly babies. Jelly babies. Jelly babies. Jelly babies. I will be needing them next week. Next week. Yeah. It's like... Anyway, so, so you have this thing where we're supposed to follow Easter according to the date of Passover, but Easter's got to be on a Sunday. Now, the moon doesn't wait for Sundays. So even though we're trying to have Easter round about the time of Passover, it often isn't. So to fix or not to fix? Fix it. Fix it? Listen, forget about anything else that's going on in the world. The Pope and Archbishop Justin are having serious conversations about this. There's a cause to get behind. Think of how teachers would love it. Mm. You know, suddenly it would be sorted out. As late as possible into April, so the weather's likely to be a bit warmer. Yeah, daffodils yeah, will nice. definitely be out. Mind you, they're out They'll now. be finished this <laughs> year. <laughs> there won't be any left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll give us a chance to get... We won't have this problem that shops have at the moment, still trying to get rid of Christmas stock, so you can still buy chocolate snowmen, mm. while you're trying to buy Easter bunnies at the same time. Yeah. There's a decent gap between Christmas and Easter. I think it'll improve the economy, you know? No wonder sometimes when I look back and I think, oh, do you know what? We had, that was a lovely, sunny, hot Easter. Then I think, oh, I remember when I was making a snowman. And, mm. and that's mm. because it's... It was it's, earlier. But then the, then the other thing, of course, we British mess it up. Easter Day this year, again, is the day we change the clocks. 
So and we'd we... lose a, an hour. Yeah, yeah. So the resurrection happens one hour earlier this year. <laughs> oh, I'm worried about the yeah. hour less that I've got to yeah. eat chocolate. The, re- the rest of the Christian world is sitting there. Yeah, I, I saw a picture last time it happened. Egg, I saw I a cartoon of Jesus standing outside the, outside <laughs> the empty tomb, and the and the women arrive. And they look at Jesus and they say, "You're early." Say, yeah, blame the British. <laughs> yeah, you can't do, can't be doing with it. You know, and I, I'm not going to survive three days at church house next week without okay. sweets. All right, uh, Matt, fix or unfix? Um, I don't think uh, I can, uh, you've explained now where, why the date falls when it does, and uh, I think it falls. It does just to be awkward. Yeah, <laughs> I think that we're kind of told, aren't we? When well, I'll tell you what, David is on the line to us from Elmswell now. Hello, David. Hello, Mark, yes. yes. Well, I've only re- really just switched your radio on. Well, I'm glad you did. Uh, my radio on, but I, I don't know what you've been on about, but there's something about Easter Day. Yes. And I'm, all I'm going to say is that Easter Day, not Sunday, Easter Day is has always been... The first Sunday after the first full moon after the 21st of March. Now, why we want to change it, I have no idea. I don't know. Let's ask the uh, Rora Dean of Colnice then. So that I can have sweets at General Synod next week. (laughs) 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 So you think we should keep it as it is and move it around then, David? Well, of course I do. Right. And you need to move it. Progress. Yes. I remember one Easter day uh, in, in the cathedral, the dean, dear dean, um, I'm forgetting your name now, and he said, uh, good morning, everybody, I'd love a uh, happy Christmas. Oh, no, it's not Christmas, it's Easter. <laughs> covered <See>? in snow. <laughs> 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 we were talking earlier on about, uh, well, it was Matt, really, when you started off by saying, well, um, when people find out you do websites and they say, oh, uh, you, you, you do computers, do you? Mm, and that's of, right, yeah. And, uh, and you're a policeman or were a policeman and they mm. kind of start giving you a bit of earache and mm. they'd run away from you in a dog collar. Yeah. Uh, that's Tori's right. been in touch. She says, I'm proper grumpy today. And uh, for the job thing, we used to uh, we used to play a game at weddings where we made up our jobs. Oh, yes, we told yes, them fine. different things that we weren't <laughs> there uh, doing our real thing. I was a brilliant funeral director, she says. <laughs> <laughs> a friend was a long haul pilot. His wife was a masseur. <laughs> Hours of fun. Those were the days. My friend Rob... Um, <laughs> Used to, um, when he was chatting to girls, used to say he uh, he ran a helicopter business servicing the rigs mm. um, in and out of the North Sea. And they said, oh, really? You know, what, what was that? And he said, um, oh, my, my company's called King Chopper. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> it's, 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 People say to me, you know, they look at the court I'm wearing and say, are you really a vicar? I said, no, I just wear a dog collar to pull birds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right, yeah. Well, it wouldn't keeps you? conversation going. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, now you... did you say potatoes? Potato day. Potatoes. My, my very first parish was a place called Grilch, which is in the eastern Transvaal. And further out, a place called Bethel. The only thing that Bethel was famous for was potatoes. And every year they had a three-day Ardabul Fiat's potato festival three days they got absolutely hammered mm. on potato vodka <laughs> so the only w- it's the only thing to do in the far eastern transvaal <laughs> so that's re- that's the recipe that leslie ought to be finding this afternoon yeah yeah potato vodka yeah okay. potato vodka. all right well, we're, i'm sure she's working on that as we speak <laughs> <laughs> the only takeaway shop was spudgy like <laughs> <laughs> now matt you cycle a lot don't yep. you but the thing is you don't really do you because you've no. got a, you've got a pedal assisted bike so you're not really exercising are you no i'm not I'm not no. exercising, apparently. No. Um, although I'm turning my, uh, m- the pedals of the bike and moving forward with uh, some assistance yeah. from an uh, um, electric motor, that somehow means I'm not exercising at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I hurtle past um, the... Uh, Mammals? <laughs> men in... Yeah. Men in, men in lycra. Lycra. Yeah. 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 When, I, when I go past them and they're, they're, they're shouting and yelling uh, all and sundry for... Uh, going too close to them. Apparently, I'm not exercising at all. Really? So apparently, not. No. Although I've noticed where I work, there's quite a large bike shed there. Yeah. Lots of bikes in there, and I've noticed in the last few weeks, lots of them, lots of those cyclists saying, oh, "Can I have a look at that bike? Is that an electric bike?" I said, "Yeah, it's an electric bike." I said, "Would you like a go?" Oh, all right then. <laughs> and, the, and before you know it, they're going up and down, and, yeah. and oh, it's really good, isn't it? Said, yeah. Yeah, that's the idea, okay. general idea. So, so what you want? to state today is that a pedal assist bike an electric bike 
is still a real bike and you still do have to pedal. Oh. Sadly, I haven't measured my thighs since I started and compared oh, I'm now, whether they're, you, they're bigger or, or, or stronger from when, when I am now riding. I've, I've, I've done about 1,200 okay. so kilometres. Is, is an electric it? bike a real bike? Oh, I think uh, this is a bit tenuous, this, this man. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I've got a gym set up in my man shed. Mm -hmm. And I've got a, I've got a, a bike, you know, a, a, a pedal bike. I've got a running machine, and I've got a weight bench. Mm -hmm. Now I think it would be a bit dodgy for me to go down to my weight bench and have a pulley system. <laughs> so I just sort of stand there with my arms on the weights, but knowing that it's actually the pulley system that's pulling them up and down. Right. And yeah. the idea being that Melinda might be able to see from the house and think he's working hard, yeah. and then I get the water spray out, spray my head, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I go in and go, oh, that was a great yeah. work. And, and I've control. actually lifted oh. nothing. Mate. I've just bench pressed a thousand <laughs> kilos, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you okay. must be doing some exercise, surely. If you bike, there must be at some point where you do a little bit of exercise. I think I, think I would compare it, because it is easier than cycling, although... Sometimes, because the bike's heavier with the motor and the battery, it's doing a lot of the work to take that extra weight, which is odd. Uh, but I'd compare it to maybe going to a gym and going on one of the exercise the bikes at yeah, the gym. Gently, yeah. Yeah, not quite gently, I don't So think. you are You're, doing exercise, remember, aren't you? Yeah. Remember I've come the home days. and had to shower immediately because I'm so <laughs> hot from, from cycling, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think it is definitely <laughs> cycling. But remember the days when you could have a moped... But you weren't allowed an electric start on it. The rally runabout. Mm. You had to have a pedal start. And it's, maybe it's a bit like that. Once you've got to get it yeah. going, turn the engine over, and then... then there was a French, the there's a French uh, yeah. moped that you did that. You saw. Oh, they were all like that. Yeah, if you, want, if you want to get a licence under a certain age, mm. that was the only oh, kind okay. of moped you were allowed. Well, it's definitely exercise, so, anyway. So yeah. on the uh, Grumpy Gets Manifesto, you want uh, electric pedal assist bikes reclassified to be just as hard work to ride as a normal bike. Yes. OK, fine. It's on the list. BBC Radio Suffolk. And we'll be with you in about seven minutes' time for the lunchtime show today. Neil Bowles, Matt Porter and the Reverend Andrew Dotchin are our grumpy old gits yeah. on the show today. Graham the Buxall Blacksmith. Uh, he was in the bank the other day. He noticed on the back of his bank card, if you lose this card, please ring this number. <laughs> <laughs> If you lose the card, how do you recall the number, he says? Oh, You've been lost with the card. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Margaret Nips, which very kindly said you can still get Vim in Wilkinson's. So, oh, uh, see, if you're they're, short, they're the proper shop. It's there. Um, uh, have we got time for uh, unfit children, I wonder? Have we got time for unfit children? Well, yeah, just very Hopefully briefly. We'll I mean, you hear about these kids now. I read a report that something like 80% of children under five are now unfit. And it's frightening that, to think that how our children are growing up. And Linda and I were talking about this the other night. And we suddenly noticed that we never see children in groups out playing anymore. You never see the boys walking with their football under their arm, going over to the park to have a kick around with their jumpers for goalposts and all that. You never see kids out with a skipping rope playing, mm. the, you know, a big 12-foot, 15-foot skipping rope all joining in. You never see them playing it and, and mm. uh, things mm. like that. And when was the last time you walked down the pavement and saw uh, a hopscotch chalked out? I'll you tell just you when, don't see it. I'll tell you when. My mother, who has a flat on the waterfront every time the waterfront road gets closed she gets on the balcony and she throws chalk over the balcony well it'd be lovely kids and she teaches them how to draw hopscotch well, on that's, the pavement it would right. be lovely to see but i mean i haven't mm. seen kids playing out and the thing it, and is she only does unfit. it she only does it when the road's closed and that's the problem mm. Is this dangerous for the kids to be out? The thing is, um, look at the four of us who probably did do jumpers for goalposts. Just imagine how big today's kids yeah. are going to be when they get to yeah. our age. <laughs> you know, we were out there playing in the street and yeah. playing jumpers yeah. for goalposts and playing mm. war and all this kind of stuff and mm. running around. Uh, and look at the size of us. So, so we just went imagine. into young adulthood, though, all of us, I would think, fairly fit people, having yeah. had a, a history of sport oh, and mm, playing. You know? We used to climb school. up on top of roofs of houses and all sorts. It was great yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember listening to a, a Carl Pill Wilkington podcast and he was talking about going on holiday and he was sitting on the beach and in the next to him was uh, an obese family they were all obese and he said that he thought oh, how poor that was and then he noticed that the child the boy who was obese he had a, a frisbee in his hands and he thought oh great he's going to do some exercise and then he noticed he was using it to eat Maltesers out. Oh, <laughs> oh, is that, is that not what it's for? Uh, we've got to leave it there because uh, we've got to talk to Jim and I've got to play the record oh. so Grumpy Old Gits thank you Matt and Drew. <laughs> Neil, welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.